It is a Christmas miracle. Patch 1.2 has finally been released out of beta and should now be the main branch of Bannerlord for Steam, Epic, GOG, PlayStation, and uh, barring any unforeseen circumstances, they say in this post also Xbox. I think they're waiting for the go-ahead, but by the time this is released, I, I would imagine that the Xbox version of this patch has also now been released. So finally, after five months, this patch is out and it's kind of crazy it's taken this long i mean we've all been saying it you know the development how this has just gone down the drain when it comes to speed patch 1.2 was a huge update but the fact that it took five months to then come out of beta was just a bit weird when all the work had already seemingly been done so in today's video i'm gonna basically run through all the changes in 1.2 if you remember that and you watched my video five months ago or whatever then not much has changed since that patch they've obviously tweaked a few things things here and there sorted crashes and fixes and also actually improved online servers which is great for the big bre events but for the most part it is still just patch 1.2 uh, all the changes there are the same so you don't have to kind of stick around and watch the rest of the video if you've already been playing it and know exactly what's in it they also went ahead and gave us a nice little recap as well so again if you're just looking for like the lowdown this is basically what is in the brand new patch we have uh, new improvements to the world map and weather being added so that's stuff like rain and snow we have formation targeting so you can now tell your archers specifically what part of the enemy formation you want to fight really useful for cavalry uh, there are now more uh, warehouses so you, again the trade has actually bumped up a bunch and we'll talk about it in more detail in a second kingdom destruction is now a thing so you no longer have random clans running around they'll either join another faction or just die they've reworked auto resolve which has definitely helped the game out massively new fog of war changes uh, new missions and battle terrain and hideouts the hideouts actually look really awesome and also they've added in cheat menus for console players and also change ways to do disable the birthing and aging on consoles as well which is great there are also a few other changes to both multiplayer and also to uh, i guess both multiplayer and normal yeah that's just basically the lowdown again if that's all you wanted to kind of know and see if there was anything new in 1.2 from previously there isn't really so you can just go ahead and head off but we're gonna go and talk about them in a little bit more detail again i think this is a hundred percent a patch you should check out if you're like wanting to come back to bannerlord and you're like oh it's been ages since i played this is definitely a big patch to come back to because yeah it does add a lot of stuff it's for a lot of us though it's just because it's been five months we're like well we've already played all of it so it's just like the normal one but i know many people don't go on to the betas many people play on console so for you guys, it would be, you know, very fresh and definitely worth starting a brand new campaign. And quickly as well, just to show you exactly how like many things are in this patch as well. I will just go down the list right now and you guys can see all the additions to the game itself. There is, yeah, a lot in this patch to mess around with um and yeah i would definitely wait maybe a week or two for all the mods to get updated for this and then just dive back in with the game really perfect for the christmas uh the christmas period for sure but yeah most of the changes are all in this initial beta release and i'll leave this down below in the description as well so you guys can check it out so we do have eight or uh, six more battle terrain maps which is really good you can see them dotted around the map a lot more in the azurai land so if you fight for the western empire or the southern empire you're very much likely to go ahead and experience these and all of these new additions are really really cool there's also four new bandit hideouts which again are great i'm a big fan of the new designs adds in more flavor and again more of these the are better which is always really nice we also have a big campaign weather effects as well and one of the really cool things is that this also affects the physical battle so it's not only rain on the battle map it's not only rain on the campaign map but you visually see these do affect battles so for example they've got it right here wet and snowy ground will go ahead and decrease the speed at which cavalry move on top of that also if it's wet or snow it's going to change up the the rate at which projectiles move as well and the damage of projectiles really determines how much damage they do the same with cavalry so it's going to have a massive effect and really change up how you're playing these battles because your cavalry is going to be less effective in these conditions your archers are going to be less effective in these conditions and that's going to give some factions a much better boost and some kind of a much better debuff so actually picking your battlefield also plays all into that this has also been pretty big as well 
well, it might not sound like it, but this is the auto resolve change as well. So they've reworked how auto resolve battles play out depending on the terrain in which they are being fought on. Now, I don't know if the AI takes this into account when choosing to fight a battle. I would assume it does because, you know, they wouldn't enter a battle if they're going to lose it. So I would assume they would take this into account. I actually don't know though. But yeah, as you can see now that on Flatlands, Cavalry get a 25% boost, 30% for their Horse Archers. So for example, fighting the Kuzites on open field and an auto resolve is not going to go in your favor. And this is also going to matter for when you're like watching battles as well. So just when the AI is fighting other AI factions. And that's probably most likely what this is going to be used for because you're not really going to be fighting the, uh, yeah, we're not really going to be fighting the Kuzites in an auto resolve if the battle is close. So this is what is going to kind of really come into play. But then you can also see if you fight them in the forest, for example, they get a massive debuff to their stats as well. And then vice versa, infantry get a bit of a boost in forest, which is, again, pretty cool. So that means like if because I ever attack the battalions, they're going to be in a much bigger problem previously when none of this applied. Like you think about how dramatically this changes the auto resolve compared to the previous patches where this had no effect. So all of a sudden, some factions get risen all the way up. I mean, Batania still gets absolutely trashed in the campaign. But this should still provide them with a little bit of bonuses and at least let them kind of hold off again. Because again, this is going to be important when they're fighting the land you're in the forest. Choosing them battlefields is going to be really important. There's also a ton of extra changes to a lot of the perks. You can see that loads of the perks all got updated and changed. Honestly, I can't remember the differences between these. It was so long ago since I looked at these, but it's always positive and I think they made some good changes from what, what I remember. They also as well improved the Fog of War mechanic. I know some people are very uh, on the fence about it. Some people like it, some people don't, and that's basically where you don't know anyone as you start the campaign. I feel still think it does need some tweaking like you should know certain people by just living in the, uh, you know, in the world of Calradia, uh, but still kind of you know cool that they're improving it and choosing to keep on working on it the next two are kingdom diplomacy and economy and trade so uh furthless kingdoms will now be destroyed so you can actually wipe factions out now previously that wasn't the case hopefully this is just the start for diplomacy it's something the game just desperately needs and if it's not in the next big update i don't know when we're going to be getting it because I think that's the, the number one requested feature is give us more diplomacy features. This is a good start, but we definitely, definitely need more. And hopefully that's what they've been working on for five months. On top of that, we also get actually a really big economy change, which I love. Uh, you now have warehouses and improvements to workshops. So warehouses allow you to basically store raw materials to then use in your workshops. For example, if I've got a smithy and then I put in my warehouse the, the, the materials needed, like the iron bars and whatever, uh, that will then use them resources rather than buying them from the market, which is super cool, right? Because it means I can go to a place in Calradia where them resources are really cheap, buy them, bring them back to my warehouse uh, and then use them in my workshops to then produce the goods. And then you can also go and take them goods and then take take them somewhere to sell them. So it kind of creates this really good merchant loop of gameplay. Now, one thing they still need to implement to improve this, like this is a great start to a more trader focused game. And again, really love it, but it needs to go further. It's kind of like the, the catch 22 with Bannerlord. There's always awesome stuff in it. It just needs to take a couple steps forward to really make that feature amazing. And what they need to do is they need to make it so you can get decent trade experience from this. They need to go ahead and implement a, a really good caravan system like now we have this in the game let us set up specific caravan routes which will run and you can kind of loop them all in together like imagine you go out you buy the resources you bring them back to your workshop the workshop then produces the goods and then you set up a trade caravan to go and sell them goods and then it kind of almost becomes autonomous like how awesome does that sound and then the entire time you are get gradually gaining more and more trade experience because of that all of a sudden like you're having a completely different game than just fighting battle after battle after battle and then you can like maybe even set it so you can then use that money to like bribe clans more efficiently and like get them to switch sides. I know you can be if to pass a persuasion test or whatever. Like then let you like all of a sudden use that trade empire that you've built to go ahead and do more stuff. And then boom, like like maybe even.
even being able to spend that money to get certain factions to fight each other. Like, oh my god, I've just created, like, the, the ultimate loop of being a trade god. Like, you do all of this, you get loads of money, and then you pay the Western Empire to fight the Northern Empire, you know? Like, boom, and you just started this massive war with all the cash you have. You swoop in, you take land, like, oh, like, that's, that sounds awesome, right? That sounds like a completely different battle lord without having to change much. Yeah. I mean, we'll probably never see it, but still, that sounds pretty cool. As you can see as well, tons of new missions here as well. Loads of new improvements to missions, which is always, you know, interesting and cool. Something as well I didn't mention as we were up here, I completely glimpsed past it, is the formation targeting. So you can now choose certain units to fight. This is really useful for stuff like cavalry, when you want to charge down specific art. Like, if the enemy have a lot of archers and you want your cavalry just to fight the archers and not come crashing into the melee combat, like, this is perfect. Again, as I mentioned, earlier is two steps forward but not quite there yet i think the ai needs to now start now that we've got this kind of formation targeting the ai needs to do more than just having three formations infantry cavalry archers there needs to be more specific groups that the ai uses so again you can utilize that a bit more effectively and i think that will go really a long long way but still this is a great change um and so i think one of the biggest features that i really like from this patch out of that though there are like a bunch of other small fixes there's lots of optimi optimi one of the big things was uh, unlocking a lot more of a private server data, I think. So again, that should really help out with multiplayer, stuff like Persistent Empires, the BRE events, and all of that stuff should be, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully a jump up. Um, there's also, yeah, as I mentioned, I think all the way up here, uh, yeah, pushable ladders now, which is fine. Oh yeah, also armor. So I don't know where it is, but they also made it so armor is dramatically different now. So Basically, higher tier units are way more likely to no longer get one shot by, like, looters. Um, which, again, is great. I don't know where it is. And I'm pretty sure it is this patch. Yeah, they said it. They reworked it. But, yeah, basically, they've made it so the armor is way more effective the higher you go up. Oh, yeah, it's down here in the both section. Yeah, boom, right tier. So, yeah, again, melee combat has now been changed so that if you've got a crappy weapon, it's not going to be doing as much damage now to the higher tiers. I think the same with, like, crappier arrows as well aren't going to be as effective. So, that should mean if you have, like, a group of elite warriors, like, you have a bunch of tier 7 soldiers they're not going to get mobbed by like 50 looters again the looters will chip away and, and do d okay damage as they hit them but they won't kill them on top of that as well they've made it so that you no longer get staggered the higher tier you're up so if you're a tier 7 and a tier 1 is hitting you he has a much smaller chance of staggering you allowing basically the higher tier soldier just to cut through swathes of enemies without just being overrun which again is a feature i really like it was nothing was more depressing than having a battalion fame get mobbed by a bunch of tier one peasants and you're like great this is good uh, so yeah that's a nice little change um which is cool again lots of uh, campaign changes number stuff like that but that's gonna do it um that's gonna do it for this patch again highly recommend you go check it out if you haven't already uh played a campaign this is definitely one for it i would imagine a lot of mods were already updated for 1.2.6 I can't imagine with how little uh, was in 1.2.7 if we go up to it. Yeah, there was what? Yeah, this. So I can't imagine it's going to take long for a lot of their mods to get updated. So yeah, make sure you dive in. I think Realm of Thrones is already updated, but it's only for their Patreons right now and will be releasing soon. So uh, yeah, definitely the time to install. I imagine people have time across the holidays to go ahead and, and jump back in. Um, and yeah, this is now available on, on PlayStation, GOG, Steam, and I think it's released on Xbox. I mean, I guess you guys can let me know down below in the comments if it is let me know what you guys thought of the patch is this something that's going to make you come back to banner lord if it's been a while you're going to wait like a week or two to wait for mods to update and then dive back in let me know and i will of course see you in the next one